Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. Uh, I'm going to talk today about the Gapster TD1 DAC. Some important things you need to know before powering your Gapster TD1 DAC. If you haven't received your boards yet, don't worry, it's still a lot of them. I didn't ship till uh, just a bit of a week ago. Even though you received the notifications that they were shipped a couple weeks back, a lot of them are just creating the labels and getting ready so I don't waste too much of your time. So, if you've finished building the Gapster TD1 DAC, things you need to know before powering it, so just to be on the safe side. The first thing is I created a little manual on my website about the Gapster TD1 DAC, and basically it's got all the videos in there, or at least most of them, and also there's a couple uh, important reads that I urge you to read those to make sure you're actually gonna be on the safe side before powering these because these are not just pre-built, you're buying them because they haven't been tested, you're actually building them yourself. So any mistakes you do could cause simple problems or serious problems. So before you power the TD1 DAC, I want, you need to make sure that all your power supplies have a fuse on them, that the line has a fuse. So if you, let's say, made a short here by mistake or, or sloppy on the soldering, that you're not going to have things going into flames. So every power supply should have a fuse. If you don't have fuses on your power supplies, make sure you put some. The second thing is you need to check your board before you power it that all the pads have no over spills on them because some of them are so tight like the resistors that are kind of in vertical mode uh, and you can the pads are so close to each other and it's easy to actually overspill and solder two pads together and short them and, some, and sometimes by doing so you might actually short the actual power supply. So when you plug it in and you have such a short on your board, you're going to have a short, something's going to go in fumes or in flames. So just make sure you make you check your board that all the pads are not overspilled. In this example, I, I was building a couple of those boards myself and I was just routinely checking. And I just happened to notice that I have shorted one of the uh, 10 ohm capacitors and that automatically means you shorted your 5 volt power supply. So I made sure I fixed it and then before I powered it. The other thing is you can do is you test the power supply. So you take your leads here and uh, you put your ohm meter on them. Don't put it on continuity in here because sometimes continuity could send power to the board and if you flip them around, it could cause damage to your OPI 86s So make sure it's on the ohm meter and they shouldn't be like, you know, you shouldn't be seeing zero or a hundred ohms on your, on your uh, thing. It should be a very high number and it should somewhat fluctuate because there's some capacitors in the way. It's gonna be like moving up and down. That's usually a good, a good sign. It's not a hundred percent sure, but at least it's better than seeing a zero short. Also, before powering your boards, make sure you test the UFL connectors like I showed in some of my videos to make sure they are oriented in the proper way and properly connected. The other thing you want to make sure is the first thing you power this thing is don't just, if you have, you know, a hundred thousand dollar, you know, fancy equipment, don't be plug it in this uh, right away in that system. Use like a cheap system if you have one to just to make sure. I'm not worried about the board. The board I've assembled, many of them, they always work right the first time, no problem whatsoever. But if you've made mistakes, I cannot guarantee you that you might short something and send some high voltage to your system and that's not very good. The other thing is when you first power this thing and it's still nothing being uh, set already, you want to make sure you first power the streamer first and then you need to play a song and that actually brings the TD1 so it doesn't send a DC offset that is 2 volt right away. And after that, you are going to adjust the DC offset. So don't even plug it into your, your amplifier yet. Just test the board um, before you even put your RCA jacks and make sure that at the end you've got uh, close to zero, you know, anything less than 300 millivolts, you're, you're doing okay. And the other thing is if you're using a FIFO uh, Pi by in Canada and with the Monitor Pi Pro, which I highly recommend, there is a setting in there about the FIFO Pi where you can put it on continuous clock. 
And if you do that, then you don't have to play a song each time to prevent the DAC from going into a, a high voltage DC offset. And that will reduce the popping in your speakers and stuff like that. And talking about that, make sure your speakers are set to a slightly lower volume. Don't crank them to the maximum and then plug the power in. You might get a, a, a voltage, a DC volt going in, and you might see here a big pop on your speaker or, you know, could damage your woofer. Most likely if you could damage maybe your tweeter or something. It's very unlikely, but put in, I'm just giving you all the layers of safety. So put your volume a little bit lower before you power. The sequence should be powering your streamer first, then powering the TD1 DAC. And this is going to be, the, then you're not going to have any DC offset going into your amplifier or your speakers. But again, to be on the safe side, like I said, just put the volume a little bit lower. First time test it with a cheap amplifier and the cheap speakers, just to be sure that you did not mess up the soldering. You don't have any sloppy solder joints that are shorting things or sending power to the wrong places. If you are building the still building or about to build the thing, make sure you check out the build of material. I emailed everyone and there is a link to download it. And some people I actually, I'm starting to print them now and actually include them in your envelope. So you either have it in your envelope or if not, check your email and there is a, an email link about to get the build of material. Cause you need to know where each resistor goes and where each capacitor goes. I have a couple of people that started building them and then find, find the build of material. I just hope you don't want to put things in the wrong order or in the bad polarity. Also, if you are still building or about to build, there are some pads that are really small. I, had, uh, I highly suggest you use flux. You can actually use flux on all your connections. It comes out nicer and smoother uh, solder joints and then you can clean the flux after that or at the very least use it on the very hard to solder joints or the tiny one. For those of you who are eager to change parts, and I have a, quite a few emails about that, uh, I cannot guarantee you that the sound is going to be perfect like the way I intended it to be if you start changing parts. I suggest you build one the way it is and then change some parts and then compare the two. Uh, for those who absolutely want to really are obsessed about bypassing the, the actual output stage, I'll have to tell you one thing, this output stage is something that you really need to check it out because it actually what makes the whole or at least part of what makes this TD1 uh, tick. And But if you are going to bypass it, if you have built it already, you can just take the little jumpers that are the power supply here jumpers that are sharing the five volts by taking those four little jumpers out. There will be no more power coming to the output stage. And then you can take your uh, output stage from the three a little pins there and this way it's not interfering with your other power stage. Now the other way around is not possible. If you bypass this when you are using another power stage and now you want to compare the two, you need to take your power stage out because it's going to mess up this power stage. This power stage will not mess up yours, but yours will because this one does not have any resistors uh, basically on the input of the uh, line where your power stage may possibly have some and that will be a huge detriment to this power stage. If you are trying to remove a TDA socket out, remember I said put them on sockets and you're removing socket from socket, make sure you apply the pressure on the corner of each area because sometimes the middle is a bit weak and you can actually break the socket and you don't want to do that especially after you solder it all around and you just uh, twist a little bit on each corner and it should slowly come out. I am still waiting on some parts for those of you who order some kits or some assembled ones and that's going to take looks like another couple weeks because I keep adding more parts and that's a good thing actually at the end at least you're going to have more parts and more things than you have to source yourself. I'm planning a video about some songs that's going to help you uh, realize basically holographic sounds and imaging so you can differentiate and because a TD1 opens your eyes to certain things like that and having good songs that's going to help you differentiate you're going to basically you're going to be able to see it right away it's going to be like a black and white between a TD1 DAC and your old DAC. 
And uh, another thing you need to maybe prepare for is set your speakers for the best imaging possible. If your speakers are stuck in a wall or in a really bad room or they're not, you're not getting any imaging right now whatsoever, you're not going to get miracles. Yes, it's going to improve a little bit, but you need to have good imaging to start with so that imaging or in 3D holographic sound gets amplified quite a few folds by listening with a TD1. I'm going to be making a list of songs, about 10 of them, just specifically the, where you can actually hear differences in um, imaging, pinpointing instruments, different frequencies, high and low and mid-range, and also the holographic uh, songs. I'm making a list of those that's going to help you uh, test your Gapster TD1 DAC and also test your system and balance it a little bit better. But while we're waiting for that, I'm just going to give you one song for now. And this is Zulu Voodoo by Kalia Scintilla. It's a great song for getting great holographic sounds and uh, high frequencies, low frequencies, mid-range and all that kind of stuff. So start with that. And I'm hoping by end of next week, I'll have a list of 10 songs for you for that purpose. I'll be putting a link in this corner about how to configure your Gapser TD1 and about 10 songs in here that are going to help you uh, hear the difference in holographic sound on your speakers and help you set them up so you can maximize the Gapser TD1 experience. So there'll be a speaker in the middle if you'd like to subscribe. My Patreon link is in the description below and I hope to see you again.